Hi everybody. It's nice to be back and for me to teach you some new fun things today. I'm holding up something very special that I found at our porch at the entrance to our classroom. On Friday, I went there to gather some information for some things I'm going to be teaching you this week. And I needed to go in the classroom to get that. And at the front door where we always come in, look what I found. How nice is that? Hmm, that touched my heart when I saw that and very special. So thank you. I'm assuming it's one of our classroom students. And if it is one of you knows, so thank you very much. There's nobody else's name on here. It says Mrs. C. So how kind. And if it isn't from our class, it might be from somebody else in the school that I know or other students that I've taught before. So it's a very kind thing to do, isn't it, everybody? Hmm, I really enjoyed that. So thank you again. Made me feel very special and it made my day. I had been working so hard all day and this put a really nice smile on my face. So thank you, whoever you are. You can tell me on my blueprint if you're on there. Say, hey, Mrs. Suzeki, that was me. Or... Maybe mom or dad could send me an email and say who it was, okay? So I really would like to say thank you personally. If, if you want to be known, if not, I accept your rock and the heart. So thank you very much. Okay, so let's get on to science. Pretty exciting. We love science, don't we? Now, in your package, in your school bag, you will have seen or have pulled out already. And if you haven't, you can go get it in a minute. This uh, package, it says, the story of my bean seed. Looks just like this. Leave it all stapled because it's a package. We keep it together. And attached to it is the baggie with a paper towel and two beans in there. Okay. So if you haven't got this in front of you now, you can pause the video and please go get that from the envelope inside your school bag. And we can start together as we... Uh, Take a look at our story of our bean seed, okay? So once you have your uh, materials in front of you, and we know in a science experiment, this is kind of like an experiment, but I'm not gonna call it an experiment so much today. It's more of a story we're watching the bean seed. And um, so you're going to have these in front of you. So let's open the baggie. Everybody do this with me together. We can open the baggie. And you can't see me because the way the video is, but you know what you're doing. And I'm taking out my two seeds. Leave the paper towel inside, please. We don't need it for today, but pull out the two bean seeds and hang on to them gently. Okay, they're pieces of nature that we're going to work with. So uh, we'll take a look at these guys. So you can put them down in front of you and take a good look at them. And I noticed right away that the shape is the same shape that is on the package, right? We call it a kidney shape. And that's just the design that it is. And I notice and I observe that it's, hmm, what do you think? Is it hard or is it soft? Hmm, is it smooth or is it rough? Hmm, is it pretty heavy or is it pretty light? You decide, think about what your observation is because you know we're going to record that observation. And what might also help you is if you happen to have a magnifying glass at home, okay? So you can pause the video and get a magnifying glass if you need to. And so with your magnifying glass, if you have one, or I happen to know that phones have an app for magnifying glass. So maybe mom and dad or older brother and sister have an app on their phone that they can uh, let you borrow the phone to have a good look. So it's always really cool. Once you take a good look, wow, do I ever see anything, something new, it pops out at me. I can actually observe it better. I can see it closer up. You know, like our magnifying glasses in our classroom, which we would be using if we were in the classroom, but we're not there today. So let's, you can take a good look. Yeah, take a good look. What do you see happening there? I see something white happening in there. I wonder what's gonna happen there. Yeah, take a look. Hmm. So once you have a really good look at your bean seed, then what I want you to do is just go ahead and put it down on your table and then take your package and I want you to write me on any of these lines what you're noticing. So use a good starter sentence. I'll let you think about that. What is a good starter sentence? 
to start to tell me what you observe. Yeah, you could say, I notice. We've used that before. You can say, I observe. You can start it with, I observe my bean seed or, and then finish the sentence. You know how we do this in the classroom. So brainstorm a little bit. How will you start your sentence? Remember capitals, punctuation, proper spelling counts here. Okay, we're near the end of grade three. And so writing is super important at this point. So we practiced a lot in school already. So show me what you know. That's something we say a lot. Show me what you know, okay? So go ahead and write down in here what it is that you need uh, to tell me about your bean seed. Then when you're finished your writing and check it and edit it, then you can color this front bean the color that you see here, okay? You can color that. And I, I noticed that little white part. So see if you can draw that little white part it's kind of in the indent of it there. Of course, we won't color the package right now or the baggie because the baggies are clear, right? There's nothing happening in there, okay? But you go ahead and do that. And now, once you have finished writing, if you're gonna to listen to my instructions all the way through, perfect. If not, you could pause the video, go ahead and start to write because this is now the next piece. You're gonna write, oh, maybe three or four sentences for me about your observation. Okay, so go ahead and write or carry on and listen and write when this one's finished. So the next thing we do after we write and color is I want you to ask mom and dad to help you get a bowl from the cupboard and it can be just a small bowl. It doesn't need to be a big bowl and this is filled with some water and I want you to pop your seeds into the water just like that. And they're going to float down to the bottom. That's what they're going to do is float down to the bottom. And they're going to stay there for the next two days. And you're just going to take a look at them. Um, you know, as you pass by, don't pick them up or anything. In two days time, and for, if, for people who are following the package, it'll be on Wednesday. So I hope you're doing this in the morning on Monday. Get them started and soaking. And then on Wednesday, you can do it in the morning or afternoon. As long as they've had two days of soaking, then um, we can move on with our next part of the activity. So that's it for this piece. So you're going to observe the bean seed, you're going to write about it in your package, give it a color on the baggie, make sure the date or the, the day that you are working on this is entered on the top. So if you start today, uh, sorry, on Monday, April, uh, May 4th, sorry, May 4th is Monday. So write May 4th and Monday. If you're doing this on a different day, because sometimes mom and dad have a different um, schedule that you need to follow. Whatever day you're using, you can just use that day, but put that day that you're starting, okay? Some, most of us will probably start Monday, but that's okay if you use it a different day. You put your day that you started your observation on this, okay? Make sure you put your name on the top, as always. Put your name on the top. And you know what that means. We used to sing that song in class. And um, this is our first page. Leave the staple in, and then this page will be colored with the bean, and lots of good sentences are being written there, okay? So that's our first activity for science. Now, I'm going to make a, another video after this one, but it's all on the same video now. I'm going to pause it from my end so you can do your activity. Then the next activity will be the math lesson on, now I think it's on Tuesday, yes, Tuesday, for learning how to tell time on a clock, okay? So finish your math or finish your science right up and you can come start this YouTube again on Tuesday, okay? I'm gonna pause it from my end and we'll see you in a minute. Okay, bye. Okay, we are back. We finished our science. Now we're ready for clock math, I call it. How to tell time on an actual clock, not a digital clock, not like your wristwatch. Some of you have a really nice wristwatch that tells you the time with digits digits involved. But this is how to tell time on the clock on the wall. If I move this way, you can see there I have a big clock behind me on the wall, okay? And some of us don't know how to tell time that way. So let's learn, okay? In your school bag, in that envelope again, you're going to find this one, okay? And I taped 
on here, a brass tab, and everybody should have one of these. So if you're not ready just yet, go ahead, go to your bag, pull this out for me, and let's do this together, okay? So uh, I'll, you can pause the video or, um, or watch it all the way through if you like and then get it, but it's probably better if you go get the clock now from your bag, okay? Okay, so you should have this ready to go. And so here it is, here's the tab. And what the first thing I want you to do is to take off that brass tab off the, off the package, okay, or off this paper. And just pull it off gently. We don't want to rip any other parts of the paper. They're important to us to cut. And then take the tape right off of that brass tab, okay? So just throw that tape away. So you have this tab. Now it can be pretty sharp, so be very careful with it. And the next thing you're going to be doing is you need a pair of scissors. Sorry, didn't tell you to get the scissors. Um, go ahead and get your pair of scissors if you need. Okay, now you're back with your scissors. So the next activity is I want you to cut the clock face all the way out, all the way around the black side, like cut around the black edges, okay, all the way around, big circle. And what that should look like is this. When you're finished, you're just going to pull that, cut that right out. The next thing you're going to cut are the two hands or the two arms here. Discard this tiny circle. Throw that one away. We don't need that one. So just cut this one out. And they're right beside each other. So you have to cut pretty carefully. So when you're finished cutting those two out, then you will have two of them like that. Okay. One is longer than the other. See that? One is longer than the other. So you make sure that they stayed the same shape that they were on the paper. Don't trim them down. They need to look a little different, okay? So now we have two of these and a circle that looks like this, and you have your brass tab. I know that your home probably doesn't have a hole punch. You know how we have in class, we have the three hole punch, but I also have a single punch, and that's how I made these ones happen. You won't have that done for you. Now in class, I would help you out and do that. Um, if mom and dad have a hole punch, they can help you cut these two holes like this. Just punch them through. If not, you can use a tiny pair of scissors or mom and dad can poke a, a hole here with a pencil or a pen to help you get that through, okay? Or use the tab pieces just to push it through, okay? You could try that as well. Now the next part is to build our clock. So we're going to build it where... The, lo the short one goes on the bottom and the long one, see if you can see this now, I'm gonna hold it right. And the top, the longer one will go on the top. So the two holes should line up. I want you to make sure those two holes line up, okay? You can put this in any direction, it doesn't matter. You can put them both together on top of each other like that, that's easy. Can you see the short ones on the top? And then you will, Pop this on and oh you have to make a hole in the center of your clock just like that you have to make a center hole as well just like you did for the tabs okay so then you'll line those holes up with these ones here sorry trying to show you so that they line up together okay and then you can easily squeeze the two prongs together and then just pop them in, push it all the way through. Can you see what I'm doing there? See it all the way through there? Yeah, poke it through. And then you just close that tab at the back, press it down, really easy. And now you have working arms for a clock face, right? See that, they spin around, they spin around easily now. Now it is paper, so you wanna be gentle with it because they can rip if you do it too hard, okay? So there you go. Now, the next part, once you build your clock, is I want you to write the numbers of the clock. If you have a clock at home on the wall, take a look at it. The numbers at the top. Now, my clock has the numbers. I like the numbers on the top of the clocks like that. Some have Roman numerals, um, so maybe your clock at home has that. So you might need some help at home. But I want you to start... Um, start with number 12. 12. Hey, you know our clock buddy system? This is like a clock buddy system. Same idea, right? So remember our clock buddy. So we start with 12 at the top, right? And then we went to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
So go ahead and write those in the circles in that right order. 12 is always at the top or at the north, right? Six is directly below it at the bottom. So don't make six here or there. It's right below 12. So make sure it's over there on the south. And on the west side is the nine, and on the east side is the three. Thinking of maps, it's always the same directions, right? So I'll pause for just a minute or two while you get those written down. Now, if you didn't pause your video and I'm still talking, then you can pause your own video. But here we have a working clock, and I hope you have all your numbers in the right way. Make sure mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, whoever is at home, checks your clock to make sure. If your numbers are in the wrong position, then you'll have a hard time learning with our clock hours that we're going to learn today. Okay, now, the next thing you're going to do is take that green package that was also in your bag, in your envelope. And this is, um, what is the hour? So you get to actually do this whole package. It's not very hard once we learn how to do it a little bit, but I do want you to work on, you might take a couple days to do this, that's fine. You don't have to do it all at once, uh, but this is the whole package for this week. You can think about it as a weekly event. You can just do a page a day if you like, or all of it at once. Whatever home is good, whatever is best at home for you. Now the cool thing I have at school, which I also brought home, is a clock and it's a shiny magnet clock. It's got a big magnet on the back, okay? And we have a couple of hands that go with it, okay? So I'm going to show you, let's see, what does it look like right away? Can you tell which one is the shorter and which one is the taller? Can you? Yeah, and like our clock we built, the short one sits on top, right? And that's how we did that, or the bottom. The short one's on the bottom and the it goes like, sorry, at the bottom. Make sure the short one is on the bottom and the top one is the long one, okay? And so let's practice telling the time. And I would put this on the blackboard. It's really heavy. And um, now, what I want to tell you in the first lesson is when the long hand, and we'll build this just like we built our clock. We'll put that right in the center. When the long hand is pointing to the top, that means it's on the hour. It is one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. We don't know yet because we don't have the shorthand on to tell us what hour it is, what time it is. So if we point it to, and I'm only going to ask you to think about these red numbers for now, those are our, um, our minutes, okay? And so if I put this here, and they don't stick together very well, so I have to kind of separate it. Now, here's the rule for the clock, okay? Oh, it's not magnetized too well anymore. All right, so if it's like that, and you see the red one? Hmm, how am I gonna show you? The red one is pointing where? Where is it pointing? Straight to the one. And if the long hand is on the 12, this means it's one o'clock. So think of the long hand pointed to 12 as the o'clock part. Hey, and we know, we've studied this, the o'clock, the apostrophe o, apostrophe clock, o'clock, stands for, yep, of the hour, right? Because you guys know that. So this means it's one o'clock. Now what happens if I take my hour hand, so always remember the short one is pointing to the hour we might be on, if I put it over here, what time is it? Yeah, eight o'clock, eight o'clock. Think of it that way. So if I was going to say um, four o'clock, where would I be pointing my red hand to? Help me out. Yep, I would be pointing it this way, four o'clock, this way. There we are. So this is how we would practice at school. I would have everybody come up and have a turn. I would write an hour on the board. Everybody would ha have a turn doing this. So, but at home, how can you do it? With the clock we just made, right? So take a look at your clock. Show me that you know of, of the clock is 12. And show me the hour for six o'clock. 
Where's my small hand going to rotate to? can go in any direction for now. You have to hang on to that one. And gently move it there. Let's see, it has to be bang on the center. It's a little bit tough with this tab, and I'm, it's not, if it's on my desk, it would be easier flat down. What time is that? Yeah, six o'clock. It's pointing to six, the short hand at six, the long hand to o'clock, right? So six o'clock. How about, ooh, is there a tricky one in there? Can I challenge you? How about 10 o'clock? Okay, let's make our clock to 10 o'clock. I'm only gonna, I'm hanging on to this minute hand, the long one, and I have to put it down because it's too hard in the middle of the air. So let's move it. You move it before me, probably. Let's see. Okay, move your clock to 10 o'clock. See if you have what I have. You should have that one. See, it's pointing to 10. The short one moves to 10, and this is, what is it? Of the clock, you're right, of the clock. So 10 o'clock. Let's see, one more before we go. How about, ooh, can I trick you? Can I have a challenge one? I don't know, you guys are pretty smart. How about, ooh, eight o'clock, eight o'clock. Okay, put your clocks on the desk. Everybody rotate your smallest hand or the arm to eight o'clock. Got it? Ready? Eight o'clock? Does it look like that? No, there we are. Eight o'clock. I'm holding it the right way. Eight o'clock. That's good. Good work, guys. <clears throat> so maybe mom and dad at home could um, give a couple of hours and say, build me or show me how 10 o'clock looks or how about nine o'clock? What about seven o'clock? So practice with those and always notice that the shorthand tells us the hour it's on and this will tell us the minute and when we say the hour, it's of the clock, okay? O'clock. So it's eight o'clock right now. So enjoy your package, go through it. So you can see now, it says, what is the hour? And it shows you the example, see? Notice the smaller hand is pointing to the hour. You need to maybe take your centimeter ruler or take a look and see which one is shorter. Sometimes on these packages, it might be a little tricky, but I notice that always one of them is pointing to 12 and it's the tall one and the shortest arm or the shortest hand of the clock is the one pointing to the hour we say. So here is an example of a clock and it gives you three possibilities, circle the correct time. Which one do you think it is? Let's do it together. I notice the tall one's at 12, so it's of the clock. And what's it pointing to? The first one? Or I'm pointing to this one, so I'm backwards in the video. This one is, what is it? Two o'clock, you're right. So is it an option? It is, two o'clock, circle two o'clock. So it's backwards to me. So I thought it was over on this side, but it's over on this side. All right, so go through all of that. That'll take you maybe one minute on the front page, not hard. Now in this inside, you have to match. It gives you the first one. It is eight o'clock. We practiced that one. Um, wait, I'm backwards. I'm backwards, sorry. It is five o'clock and it points to the five, okay? So find your matches. This one is, yep, 11 o'clock, find it. And where's 11 o'clock? Right there. So draw a line for me there. So that's all that one is. Now this page changes a little bit and it says, what time is it? It gives you o'clock, but you have to tell me what time it is. So it gave you the example, eight, eight o'clock. This one's blank because we need to know what time is it? We know the shorthand tells us the hour, okay? And let's see, the package just changes a little bit all the way through, but you'll be able to understand it. Here it's using numbers below. Um, and we know in a digital clock, it is zero, zero, if it's on the hour, and the hour of the, the number of the hour shows up first. So let's see, gave you the example again, eight o'clock, eight, zero, zero. The zero, zero just means minutes, and we'll learn more about that, but it means minutes, which means of the clock right now. And here's a good question for you. Yeah, it's a thinking question. You have to actually think about this one. What time will it be in one hour? So in 
It says five o'clock now. In one hour from five, it would be six o'clock. You're right, so there's the answer. It's eight o'clock on this clock. What time is it in one hour? It won't be eight o'clock, but it will be, you're right, that's the clock time it'll be, okay? So carry on with that whole package. And at the back, word problems. And that's always lots of fun to go through. So let's see, Bob went to the zoo at two o'clock. So you could build that with your clock, make two o'clock happen. He went home at three o'clock, so build that one. Then he was at the zoo for blank hours. How many hours was he there? How many between two o'clock and three o'clock? What's the jump? What's the pattern there? So you can use your clock to help answer that package. So have fun with telling time and we'll do more in another day next week. Okay, enjoy your clock. Bye for now. Hi everybody. So welcome back. So we've done science at the beginning. Then we have done our clock math. And now we're gonna continue on with our second part of our science, okay? So your seeds have been soaking for two days. Have you noticed any difference? So what I want you to do is to take out your seeds from your bowl and put them out, maybe some paper towel on the table so the table doesn't get wet. And you can put them on down. You can't see me, but I'm putting mine down on the table. And do you notice anything different? Maybe use your magnifying glass or mom and dad's phone app and take a good look. You'll see a big change. You'll feel the change too. I'm not going to give you any clues today about what you might feel or what you might see. It's up to you today to take a good observation of your bean seeds from the water. So take a look and tell me all about that in your package. So now you've done your first page. I want you to open up your package, go to the second page. This is important. I want you to put today's date or whatever day that you're doing this second part on. It should be Wednesday, but it might be a different day if you started differently. So put Wednesday, May 6th. That would be the date for most of us. Now, same as the day before we did this. I want you to use these lines to write full sentences about something or two or three things that you observe. How does it feel? What does it look like? What changes happen to the seed? Okay, so tell me in your words, using full sentences, and then go ahead and color this. If it looks a little different, go ahead and color it differently how it looks, okay? Now, we also know that from doing our science and observation and procedure, and when we do a diagram, this is now becoming a diagram. If you notice any changes, you can add that. Um, I won't write the words down because I want you to see what's happening, but write the word, what you think, the whatever observation you're using, and remember, put the line to it, just like we did in our other experiments. So that's the pretty much the pattern of our science package that's gonna happen when we follow our bean seed story. So the bean seed started hard, perhaps, and smooth, maybe, which whatever you observed. On day, I guess it's day, technically day three, but two days away from it. It went all day Monday, all day Tuesday, and now it's Wednesday. Um, tell me what you're noticing, what's changed about that bean seed, okay? So go ahead and do that. And then um, the next thing I want you to do is we're going to put the seed into the baggie now, okay? So it's been soaking in a bowl. So this is where your paper towel will come in handy. And I put one in for you and take it out and uh, go to the sink now and get a little bit of water on there and give it a squeeze out woo, so it's not too, too wet. We don't, we call it being down. And mom and dad or any other adult in your house will know what damp means. So you can double check with damp. And we don't want too much water because it will make the bean seed go moldy. We don't want it to go moldy. So a little bit of water and put that back inside to your baggie in the same shape you saw it in. So it was in a square. So let's put it back inside in a square. 
Okay, just like that. It's a little bit harder to do when it's wet. And then we're going to put the beans inside that. So you're going to take your bean and pop that inside and see how it goes like that. And then put the other one in. And I would put them pretty far apart from each other because something is going to happen to those and we want to be able to see and observe. And then I'm going to just press them down a little gently on there. Give them just a little tiny push like that, okay? And that'll help them stick to that paper towel. Then what we would do in class, I see the bean fell down, which is okay if it does that. Sometimes that happens. And we just want to make sure that we stick it on there, okay? And if they fall to the bottom, just try to wiggle them up a little bit for the beginning of this. We need them to be a little bit higher. And then you can find a nice sunny window. Today it's really rainy outside, but that's okay. Um, if it's rainy, that's still fine. So what you want to find, put these into a window. So at school, I would string along some nice string from frame to frame. I would use clothes pegs like we have, and then our names would be on the bag. I would have your name on the baggie, but yours is at home, so you don't need to put your name on unless you really want to. And Or Haley and Kaylee, you might need to because we have to say whose bag is whose now because there's two bags on the go at home there. So uh, let's see, a paper clip or a clothes peg, anything like that to hang it from the string. Now, if you don't want to set that up, mom and dad, that's a lot of work. But just find a place in the window. You can stand it up or lean it against something as long as it's in a window, okay? So that's the activity for today. And we'll move on to next week and we'll come back and take a look at it. And we need to see is there any changes happening after a few more days. So it'll go over the weekend and into the beginning of next week. And then we'll have another video and we'll talk about what that might look like, okay? So I think, let me just double check my notes and make sure I've covered everything. Yeah, I have. So that's the second activity for science. Hope you enjoy that. Um, have a nice observation today. I hope that your seed looks and feels a bit different and it should. So one more video to follow and it's for Mother's Day art. So shh, don't tell mom. You might wanna have dad or grandma or an older sister or brother to listen to this part, okay? So this is for Mother's Day. It's coming up this weekend, okay? So take care and stay tuned, and I'll be right back with Mother's Day. Bye for now. Hi, everybody. So we are back. Now you've had science part one. You've had clock math part two. You had science part three, or part two. And then now we have Mother's Day art, okay? So, shh, make sure mom's not in the room. Okay, make sure dad's in the room or grandma or an older sibling that's watching you or a family friend who's ever there in your house, okay? So we wanna make a surprise for mom because we would be doing this in the classroom for sure, okay? So I know you worked hard already earlier today or on a different day, you did your acoustic poem for mom and you also wrote a letter or a haiku for mom. So that's an option, right? So you can maybe use one of these inside the next activity we're going to do. It's a Mother's Day card and it has some special items with the card. So I've already uh, let parents know ahead of time on the weekly schedule that for this activity, you'll need some construction paper. It has to be a little bit thicker in order for this to work. So I'll let you uh, pause your video and make sure you have your construction paper all lined up on the table, ready to go. So you will need some glue. So use your glue stick or your white uh, liquid glue that you have at home and we've used already for a different project. Uh, you'll need um, scissors, okay, and your pencil. All right, so come on back and we'll do our Mother's Day art card together. Okay, so we're all ready to go. Now I happen to have a pink piece of construction paper. It actually looks, it's the, it's the regular size, right? Eight by 10. And we're gonna fold it in half, just like we would as if it was a card, right? So we're gonna open it like a, a book and it's a card, okay? So you're gonna have this. 
Now this is the front of your card. We're gonna work on that later, but right now I'll show you what to do. On the inside of your card, I want you, I'm just trying to figure out how to open this for you guys, to write something, let's see, really cool. This is the inside of your card on that page. Write something, you could use your haiku that you've written. You could use your letter if you like. You can use your acrostic uh, poem or acrostic poem in there. Um, or you can say, Happy Mother's Day, or I love you, Mom, or something really nice that Mom would like to read from you. Something from your heart, okay? Maybe draw some hearts in there. That This is the message part of your card, okay? And you can use both sides of the card if you need to, to write that message on the inside, right? You can write your message and the inside of the card. So now we're gonna work on the front of the card and I will show you an example. So on the front of the card, we're gonna decorate it with uh, like a flower pocket or a flower vase or vase, depends how people say that. And the, the bottom can look, in can look in different shapes. It can be like the shape of a vase or a vase. It can be the shape of just a plain pocket. So what I mean by plain pocket is I use a different color and I cut out about half the length or half the size and we've done measurements so you can do that. See this black is halfway and I'm going to glue, watch carefully, I'm going to glue this side, the bottom, it's not quite at the bottom, I can make sure it goes all the way to the bottom and it depends how we cut it I guess, yeah. So I'm going to glue both sides really well and the bottom because the flowers are gonna fall out. And I'll show you, we're gonna make flowers next. But see now, when I glue it down, it becomes like a little pocket. See, it's a pocket. Now I have something underneath it, I'm trying to show you in a second what that looks like. So you can use black or a different color. And I just showed you how to make that rectangle pocket. If you wanna make a vase or a vase, that's what that can look like. You see that here? So we glue this way, this way, the sides, but don't glue the top. We need to be able to get your finger in there to get your flowers. We're gonna build flowers that go directly in light inside there, just like in a flower vase or a vase. So this um, card was made for me as an example. One of my students did that for me. So um, it kind of looks like a flower vase, yeah, a little bit. And then they decorated it with different color construction paper. You can draw yours, you can decorate however you see. I think glitter would be kind of fun. Maybe some buttons, maybe some yarn, whatever you have at home, you wanna decorate that, okay? So first of all, I do want you to write inside. Make sure your writing is, your message is in there. So that part's done. Then you're gonna build the front, okay? So that's the front. This is your pocket or your vase size. And then the next thing we need, we need some flowers in there. So on the instructions I gave already for, uh, for weekly schedule, I asked for some green construction paper for some strips. And I measured them and they're about two centimeters wide, maybe two centimeters wide. One and a half is a bit tiny, but uh, two to three centimeters wide is pretty good. And that's the beginning of what our flower stem will look like, okay? Then you can add the, the leaves on the side. And I'll show you the leaves on the side. Okay, I'll show this one, just like that, see the leaves? And that's the leaves of a stem. It's a different color green. If you had two different color greens, that's awesome because flowers aren't all the same color in nature. They have different colored stems to them, okay? And then what you can do is to now have a flower head on the very top. So there, this person made sort of like a daisy, daisy, and they added it to the very top. And I notice, am I going the right way? There we are. Dishes is written on the stem. So in your activity, I want you to do this. This card is going to become a bouquet of flowers for mom. Oops, I'll show you this way. So I'm just gonna pop that right in there. See how that goes in your pocket or your vase really nicely? It's going to become like a bouquet of flowers for mom. And she won't know that there's some chores or errands you've written on. You can put them on the back so they're kind of hidden if you like. And see if you make these too long, they'll bend forward and fall. But if you cut them down so that they're the right size, I've got one more flower to add. I'd like you to build six if you can. Different heights and different shapes of flowers, different colors. And that's why I said different colors of construction paper. 
to make these different flower heads. Oh, this one's a little bit backwards, so I'll put it there. There we go. See? So if these are a little bit, tiny bit shorter, you can change the heights of them a little bit by just cutting the bottom off, right? Take the bottom of the leaf off, uh, the bottom of the stem off, right? So doesn't that look nice for mom? Oh, wow. A nice bouquet of flowers on, on Mother's Day morning. And I have a bouquet here of tulips. And you see the different heights of them. You see the different shades of green. So that's why I thought, uh, you know, lighter green I see over here. And this is darker green. So flowers in nature have different sizes, different colors to them. These are all tulips. So if you want to have your bouquet all the same, make them all tulips, that'd be fine. Whatever flower your mom really likes, that'd be really fun. Um, this person did a whole bunch of different flowers, right? So different, uh, it's all different for every mom. And whatever you make, I know mom's going to really like it. So go ahead and build your flower card for mom. Now brainstorm about chores. Would mom like you to do the dishes? Would mom like you to maybe do the vacuuming? Or how about walk the dog for mom? Or Mm, a box of chocolates for mom, maybe something like that, an errand or a chore or a gift that you can actually come up with and give to mom. So mom will say, okay, pick a flower. And if these words are on the back of the stem, she won't be able to read them. So she might pick this one and say, let's see, I didn't write, nothing's on the back, but she can pull it out and you can read it to her and say whatever chore you put on there. That would be lots of fun for mom. So enjoy making your Mother's Day card and your flowers and be creative and colorful and whatever else you want to do with that. Okay, so enjoy, have fun. Happy Mother's Day to your mums from me as well. Okay, this is all for the week. This is the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed this week, guys. I miss you and we'll talk soon. Okay, all right. Bye for now.